Hey, how's it going? Hope you're doing well. Today we're talking about variance in Figma. You can think of variance as being a single component that can shape shift and change into another component while still just being a single component. We'll explain all this further, but once you learn how to use variance, it's going to make you a much more efficient developer and just it's going to improve your workflow. So stick around for this video if you'd like to learn how to use variance and I hope you enjoy. Alright, so step one is to create a default component. Now, all a variant is, as simple as it might sound, a variant is just a variation of a component. Now, in order to have these variations, we're going to have to start off with a component that we can manipulate and change. So, I'm going to go ahead and just make our starter component or our default component. Alright, so I'm going to try to keep this as simple as possible. But what we've done is created this component. It's not yet a component. Uh, we could go ahead and create it into a component or we can just leave it as a frame and text. Uh, it's just going to be slightly different when we actually create the variants, um, but I'll show you both ways. So this step is going to be naming this default component. So what you're going to do is you're going to go over to the left panel and you're going to start naming it. What you're going to start with is what component did you create? Well we created a button so we're going to name it that. Um, moving on, we're going to think about all the different variations of this button we're going to create and we're going to have different properties for that. So. Um, maybe we're going to have a primary button, maybe a secondary button. Well, that's a variation right there. So this could be my primary. Uh, we could have a state property. So what state can this be in? It can be enabled, uh, which is going to be default. It could be hovered. It could be clicked. It could be disabled. All those states are going to affect the way this button looks, and those are variations. So by default, uh, this button will be enabled. So that's what it's going to look like when it's enabled. Um, we could go ahead and do size as well so this could be a small button S so size could be our property and it could have small it could be large maybe we'll have a medium size button but for this we'll just do small and the list could go on so you could have this going for a long time you could have it with icons without icons you could have dark mode buttons light mode buttons so anything that's going to be different from this default button you're going to want to add that into this naming um, so once you name it, we're going to move on to our next step. Alright, so step three. This may be a little bit confusing, but like I said, I think this will make more sense the more you see and the further we go. So this step is going to be creating our variations. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Control D and just get some of these lined out. And it will make more sense the more I go. So, Alright. So I've laid out some buttons here and I'm going to go ahead and lay down some naming and I think it will make it a little bit clearer to understand. Alright, so I went ahead and just named these um, and I'll explain this. So this row right here, or column, is going to be our enable buttons. This column is going to be hover buttons. This column is going to be click buttons. So those are my different states. Um, this is going to be my primary buttons that are small. These are going to be my primary buttons that are large. These are going to be my secondary buttons that are small. And this row is going to be my secondary um, buttons that are going to be large. I accidentally put small down here. So let me change that to large. Now, this button is not going to change. It is already named and set the way we want it to. But we're going to want to go ahead and change the way all these look into the variations that we want them to look to. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Alright, so I went ahead and styled these buttons, and usually I want to make a change to this uh, first one, but all I did was added a stroke to it, but other than that, this one did not change. But hopefully this gives you a little bit of a clear understanding of how i done these. So like I said, this row is small, this one's primary large, and these are my, my, all of my primary buttons, these are all my secondary buttons. Like You can see that they're clearly different, but they f suit each other. Um, and you can see my different states, so like hovered and uh, clicked. And I want to point some things out as well. So how I made these larger is I took the scale tool and I just scaled up my original um, frame. And you want to make sure to do the scale so that the text scales with it. Um, as far as changing the color of these, a simple way to do that is you can just select all of your components and you can change them at once however you need. So yeah. Those are just a few tips I would do, but that's step three, and we're going to move on to step four. All right, so moving on to the next step, 
all we're doing is renaming our variations. So currently, all these variations share the same name with the default button primary enabled small. And we don't want that. We want each of these variations to have a unique name. So in order to do that, well, what I'd suggest doing is just look at your labels. So we know this column is enabled, and we need everything to say enabled. And it does. Well, this column says hovered, but it says enabled. So we know we need to change this column. And in order to do that, you're going to hold Control, select your components, hit Control r and say, hey, grab the word enabled and replace that word with hovered. And it matches. And you're gonna do that with clicked. And then I'll just show you one more. So primary small, uh, we know all these are named appropriately because it says primary small, but this says primary large. Well, it says primary, so we don't ought to worry about that, but they say small. So we need to change that. So I'm gonna hit Control R after selecting them. I want you to grab the word small and replace it with the word large. And we're going to repeat that just for all these, and we're going to repeat it for clicked. And you'll have to do this one twice. You'll have to change it to primary and small. All right, so all these have been named appropriately, and we can move on to our final step, which is creating variants. Now, currently, all these are not even variants yet, They're, or even components. They are just frames over here. Um, and there's an inefficient way to do this, and I'm going to show you that. It's by creating these as components. So once we select them, we can go over here and create multiple components. Now each of these are just their own component and if we want one of these for say I want this secondary enabled large button I have to go to my assets, go to button and I gotta find it in here. I, so I needed a well I needed a secondary that was enabled and large. Well there it is. It was super slow to grab that and if I have to do that a bunch of times it's just it's just not good. We don't we don't want to do that. But there's a simple fix to this. So the simple fix is using variants. So in order to create variants, we can select all of our components if we already have created components and we can combine them as variants. Or the other thing is is if these are set to um, frames still, we can select them, we can go up here and we can click this and create a component set. Now what this has done is combined all of these into one default component. So I can go over here to assets and I can grab this component and drag it over here. Now if you notice, this component looks identical to the default one we made over here. But this component is super powerful. So if we click on this component and we look at the right, we see these properties. And by the properties, we can select how we want this button to be. So if I want this secondary large button, all I have to do is say, hey, I want a secondary uh, enabled large button. Boom, I have it. If I want to change it, I can. I want that to be primary. Uh, so it's super fast and efficient and hopefully you see the power of variants. And this doesn't just apply to things like this. You can use it for check boxes or even radio buttons and more. Um, one thing I will recommend to change though is if you click on your variant and you see how these just say property one, property two, property three, we don't really want that. We want it to be clear. So in order to change that, we go over back to the one we created, click it, and we double click. And appropriate name for primary and secondary, we could do type. For enabled or not, or covered, we can say state. And for small or large, we can set that property to size. Now it's a lot clearer. So that's pretty much how you create variants in Figma. All right, so I think that covers everything on variants. Um, we went over that they are just the single component with a lot of different variations within itself. And we can change that component to whatever variation we need very efficiently. So hopefully you can incorporate this into your designs and it will make you a more efficient designer. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you have any questions, you can leave a comment and I'll get back to you. And subscribe so you don't miss future videos. Thanks for watching.